ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد then i'm going to begin the topic inshallah today regarding an important question that was put to one of the great scholars of our era Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah ibn Baz the great imam the mujaddid Sheikh al Islam of this era he was asked by a young person and that young person said that i am a youth and i've exceeded beyond the limits against my own soul in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that i have even stopped praying and i don't pray much and i have not fasted even a full ramadan in the whole of my life and i do other ugly and evil acts and many times i have pledged to myself that i will repent and i will make tauba and i do so but even after i've done so i go back to sinning and i have friends and i have companions in our area and where i live who are not upon the correct religion they are not upon istiqama and they don't practice their religion as it should be practiced and likewise i have family members like my brothers and they come to the house and they are not righteous either and they bring their friends and they are not righteous either and i know that i have severely transgressed transgressed against my soul in sin and i have done evil acts but every time i resolve myself and i am determined with the tauba to allah i return back to sin as i was before o oh, sheikh our father can you direct me to something that will bring me closer to allah to my lord and distance me away and distance me away from the evil deeds So Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he answered this youth this young person this young man he said to him that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his book he said qul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillahi inna Allah yaghfiru adh-dhunuba jami'an innahu huwa al-ghafur ar-rahim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned say to them o muhammad ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim o my servants who have transgressed against themselves with sin la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not despair at the mercy of allah inna allah yaghfiru adh-dhunub jami'an Indeed Allah he forgives all sins innahu huwa al-ghafur ar-rahim indeed he is the of forgiving and most merciful Sheikh Abdul Aziz he mentions that the scholars have agreed that this noble ayah was revealed regarding ones who repented meaning that these are individuals who repented and then they sinned so whomsoever repented from sins with a sincere and truthful tauba then allah will forgive all of his sins due to this ayah that allah mentions say to them o muhammad o my servants who have transgressed against their own selves with sin despair not at the mercy of allah we are not my sisters individuals who despair the scholars have agreed that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tauba of the one who seeks allah's tauba 
and seeks the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will forgive sins. And likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in an ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha, asa rabbukum, an yukaffira ankum sayyiatikum, wa yudkhilakum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. That Allah has mentioned in this ayah, O you who believe, turn to Allah in repentance, a true and sincere repentance. It may be that your Lord, it may be that your Lord will forgive you your sins. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be that your Lord will expiate your sins and admit you into the gardens of paradise under which rivers flow. Likewise, my sisters, that it is, we should understand that it is the tawbah of Allah, or meaning seeking the tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will expiate our sins, will remove the filth of sins and the dirt of sins from our bodies and from our hearts. Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, tubu ila Allah. O you who believe, Turn to Allah in repentance. Turn to Allah in repentance. A true and sincere repentance. Nasuhan. A tawbah. Nasuhan. Asa rabbukum an yukaffir ankum sayyiatikum. And perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your Lord will expiate your sins and admit you in the gardens of paradise. Likewise, we find the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya ayyuhal nas, tubu ila Allah. O mankind, make tawbah to Allah. Turn to Allah in repentance. For inni atubu ila Allahi mi atamarra fi yawmin. He mentions that indeed I seek Allah's, I seek tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times a day. This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanding us with the tawbah of Allah. Ya ayyuhal nas, tubu ila Allah. O mankind, O people, seek the tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do not despair, my sisters. So Allah the Most High, as Shaykh bin Baz has mentioned, connected the expiation of one's sins and entry into the gardens of paradise mentioned in this ayah with a true and sincere repentance. And this tawbah includes the following. Firstly, if you want to make tawbah to Allah, these are the stages that you have to go through. Number one, leaving alone the sin and being cautious of it. Secondly, to feel regret and remorse over that which you have done. Thirdly, to firmly and truthfully resolve not to return back to it due to your veneration of Allah. Fourthly, fourthly, hoping in His reward and fearing in his punishment. And also from the conditions of Tawbah, is that you, that if you have wronged someone, that you return back the right that you have taken from them. And you seek Allah's forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Shaykh Abdul Aziz mentions, that if you have taken someone's wealth, or you have taken someone's blood, or you have taken someone's honor, then return that back to them. Return their wealth. Pay them compensation. And return back their honor if you have dishonored them. So these are from the affairs that are required for a person. Firstly, that you give up the sin. Secondly, that you feel remorse. Thirdly, that you seek Allah's forgiveness. Fourthly, that you resolve never to return back to the sin. And fifthly, return the rights. Return the rights of those whose, of, uh, whose rights you have taken. These are the requirements, my sisters, for the one who wishes to make tawbah to Allah, Jalla wa ala. So be from those individuals, my sisters, who are constant in the seeking of the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentions, and if, it, if he is not able, or it is not easy for him to, excre- uh, to extricate himself, in front of his brother after taking his honor, then he should make plentiful dua for him. 
or if you have taken the honor of your sister by backbiting her, then you make dua for her and you mention her good deeds just as you used to mention the evil deeds in the same places that you made ghibah, in the same places and gatherings that you used to speak evil of them previously, then you return back to those gatherings and you praise them and you speak good of them in a truthful manner. This is because righteous deeds expiate and wash away evil deeds. And Allah the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ That Allah has mentioned, and all of you beg Allah to forgive you. O believers, that you may be successful. Likewise, we should understand that when we do good deeds, that they wipe away the evil deeds. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ هَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ Allah's Messenger Sallallahu said, Fear Allah wherever you are. فَأَتْبَعِ And follow up. السَّيَّةَ الْحَسَنَةَ And follow up the evil deed with the good deed. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu has informed us that the evil deeds are wiped away by the performance of good deeds. Fear Allah wherever you are. Fear Allah when you are in the company of your family. Fear Allah when you are in the company of sisters. Fear Allah when you are in the company of strangers. Fear Allah when you are alone. Fear Allah when you are in a group. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every condition and in every affair, my sisters. Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. As the Prophet wasallam said to his companion Mu'ad bin Jabal. He said to him, Fear Allah wherever you are. Wa atbi sayyat al hasana. Tamhuha, and follow up an evil deed with a good deed, for indeed it will wipe it out. nas bi hasan, and behave with the pe- with the people, with good manners and in good treatment. Likewise, the statement of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that we mentioned earlier, and the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Fa inni atubu ila Allahi fi liyomi mi'atamara." For indeed I turn to Allah, Messenger of Allah. I turn to Allah, he said, in repentance in a day a hundred times, the Prophet ﷺ said. Imagine that, my sisters. This is Rasulullah. So if you turn to Allah 20 times, then what harm would it do you? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this ayah, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَأَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And turn to Allah, all of you, O believers, that you may be successful. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz brings a beautiful fa'ida. Sheikh Abdul Aziz, he mentions, so Allah connected in this ayah, success with tawbah. Allah connected the success to the tawbah. So this shows that the one who has repented is successful, is muflih. And he is a person who is happy because of the fact that he made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the one who makes tawbah follows up, follows up his tawbah with iman and righteous actions, he wipes away his sins due to that which we have mentioned from the Prophet sallallahu in that narration that we mentioned of follow up, a good, follow up an evil deed with a good deed for indeed it wipes it away. So imagine that you make tawbah and you are successful. Then you do righteous deeds and Allah wipes them away. So how do you turn to, how do you return back to Allah in that situation except that Allah completely has wiped away your sins? So therefore, an individual that when he makes tawbah and he follows up his tawbah with iman, Righteous deeds, righteous actions, studying the deen, establishing tawheed, worshipping Allah, learning the religion. He wipes away his sins and replaces them with hasanat. As we have mentioned earlier in the ayah that we mentioned. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah mentioned, Asa rabbukum an yukaffira ankum sayyiatikum. That your Lord, that he will replace and he will expiate your sins. He will expiate them. 
ويدخلكم and Allah will enter you into the jannat تجري من تحتها الأنهار under which rivers flow for whom? for the one my sisters who makes tawbah to Allah ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tubu ila Allah tawbah al nusuha this is how Allah begins that ayah in surah al-tahreem yo you who believe Turn to Allah with Tawbah, a sincere and true Tawbah, that Allah will expiate your sins. For what? For making Tawbah. For making Tawbah, Allah will expiate your sins. And He will enter you into the gardens of paradise. For what? For making Tawbah. For the one who has repented to Allah and turned to Allah in forgiveness is like the one who never sinned in the first place. So Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Bazi mentions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in Surah Furqan when he mentioned shirk, he mentioned killing, he mentioned zina. What did he say? وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٌ وَلَا تَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسِ أَلَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَٰلِكَ يَلْقَىٰ أَثَامًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this ayah. And those who do not invoke any other God along with Allah, nor do they kill a person which Allah has forbidden except due to a due right, except due to a right, nor do they commit fornication. And whoever does this will receive a severe punishment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, يُدَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And Allah will, will, the torment will be doubled and multiplied for him on the day of resurrection. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ And he will remain therein. And he will abide therein. مُهَانًا In disgrace. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَأَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Except for the one who repents. Except for the one. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ Except for the one who repents. وَآمَنَ And believes. وَأَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And does righteous deeds. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهُمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ, وكان الله غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا For those individuals Allah has mentioned. Except for those who believe, except for those who repent and believe and do righteous deeds, for those Allah will change their sins into good deeds. And Allah is up for giving most merciful. Look what Tawbah does. Look what Tawbah does for the one who kills, for the one who commits zina, for the one who does and, and does huge amounts of sins. That Allah will give them a disgraceful punishment. And Allah will multiply the azab yawm al qiyamah. And they will remain in that punishment. Disgraced as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Except. Who is the one who has an exit from this? What is the exit strategy for the one who has committed these crimes? Allah has mentioned. Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha. Fa ulaika yubaddilu allahu sayyiatihim hasanatin wa kana allahu ghafoorun rahima. Except for the one who makes tawbah, the one who believes, the one who truly believes and does righteous deeds, then Allah will replace their sin. Not only will Allah wipe the sin, Allah will replace their sin with righteous deeds. And Allah is the unforgiving, most merciful. Allahu Akbar. The mercy of your Lord, my sisters. What crime have you committed that Allah will not forgive you? Turn to Him. Leave off the sin number one. Feel remorse number two. Seek his forgiveness number three. And do not return back to the sin number four. And if you return back to the sin, then start over again. Leave the sin. Feel remorse. Seek Allah's forgiveness. And, 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 and do not return back to it. And if you return back to it, then start again. Up until death reaches you. Up until death reaches you, do not give up this process. Do not give up those stages. 
Tubu ila Allah. As Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in that hadith. Fa inni atubu ila Allah. Fil yawmi miyata marra. Turn to Allah in repentance. For indeed, I repent to Allah. I myself, the Messenger said. I myself repent to Allah a hundred times a day. So how many times do you want to make tawbah? Make the tawbah. No matter what sin you have committed. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah is the forgiving and most merciful. So my daughters, my sisters, young and old, be upon salafiyya, be upon piety. Be upon salafiyya, be upon sidq. Be truthful. Turn to Allah with truthfulness and sidq. Turn to Allah with ikhlas. Be those, be from those sisters, my, 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 be from those individuals, my sisters, who are never forgetful for, with regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be from those individuals, my sisters, that you are individuals who are constantly, constantly, constantly turning to Allah. That you are never neglectful. That you are individuals who are truthful and you are not liars. As Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّ صِدْقَ تُمَّعْنِينَةٌ وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ رِيبَةٌ For indeed, صِدْق and truthfulness, it is tranquility of the soul. وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ And indeed, lying, it sows doubts in the heart. That's what lying does. It will throw you into doubt with regard to your religion. So do not be from the liars. Salafiyya is, a, is the da'wah of haqq. It is the da'wah that instills in our hearts truthfulness and sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Salafiyya we are upon. It is not a Salafiyya of pretense and fraud. It is a Salafiyya that we believe in and we act upon. And when we fall short, we turn to Allah. We believe in Allah. We do righteous deeds. And we want Allah to expiate us and to replace our evil deeds with good deeds. Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, he mentions further. From the causes of achieving, the repentance is beseeching Allah, begging Allah, making dua to Allah the perfect and most high, asking him for guidance and success. And he will favor you with acceptance of your tawbah. He the most perfect, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Ad'uni astajib lakum. Supplicate to me, and I will answer you. And likewise, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa idha salaka ibadi anni fa inni qareebun, ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'ani. That Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and when my slave asks you concerning me, then I am close. And I answer the supplication of the one who supplicates to me. When he calls upon me, I will answer him. So call upon your Lord, my sisters. Call upon your Lord. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, advised us with good companionship. And achieving istiqama with good companionship. Keep company not with only Salafis, but with the best of the Salafis. Because we don't mix with Ahlul Bid'ah anyway. We don't mix with the people of misguidance. And the people of, of, of you know, the people who call to the gates of Jahannam. We don't mix with the Shia. We don't mix with the Sufiya. We don't mix with Ikhwaniya. We don't mix with Tabligiya. Our companionship is with the Salafiyun. With Ahlul Sunnah, those who share our Aqeedah, those who share our scholars, those who love Ahlul Sunnah in every place, those who are not treacherous, those who are not from the Mukhaddilin, they do not forsake us in our time of need, meaning in the time of need of Ahlul Sunnah. They are steadfast, good companionship. Then, on top of that, that even if they are from the Salafiyin, that you do not mix with the sinful from the Salafiyin. You mix with the righteous from Ahlul Sunnah. 
those who worship their Lord, those who do not lie, those who do not deceive, those who do not pray trickery. So if there are Salafis who are behaving like this, then we mix with the best of the Salafis and not with those individuals. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to encourage with good companionship. To encourage them with good deeds. Distance yourself from evil companions and evil friends. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Al-mar'u ala deeni khalili falyanzur ahadukum man yukhalil That Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith Reported by Abu Dawood in the book of in the book of Adab and a Tirmidhi in the book of Zuhd and Imam Ahmed in his Musnad Al Mar'u ala Dini Khalili that an individual is upon the religion of his companion. So look to whom you take your companionship. Look to whom you take as your close intimate companion, my sisters. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. That the similitude of a righteous companion and a wicked companion is like the similitude of the one who keeps companionship with the seller of musk, with the seller of perfume, and with the one who keeps companionship with the blower of the bellows of the blacksmith. So either when he keeps company with the, with the seller of the musk, that even if he does not buy anything from him, doesn't purchase it. He doesn't apply any of that perfume upon his skin. At the very least, he will walk away with a good smell. And as for the one who keeps company with a bad companion, then he is like the one who keeps, who visits and keeps company with the blower of the bellows of the blacksmith. Either he will burn his clothes or he will walk away with a foul smell. So these are the ways that the youth keeps away from sin. Keep with good companionship and you'll be in good company. Keep away from bad companionship. Turn to Allah in repentance. Never despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those individuals who are truly repented to him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and our forgiveness and our tawbah. When we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawbah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. If the sisters have any questions. Then you can put them through. It looks as though you have some sort of service here where you can put your questions in. So you can post your message inshallah. Okay, there's, there's a, a few questions here. First question is, and they've been emailed to me. If you're wondering why they're not on your forum there, they've been emailed to me. The first question is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all for the da'wah you are upholding in the West. Allahumma ameen. My question is that here in New Zealand, we have many people on his via, including family. We have tried and try to explain the haq to them, but they do not leave off affiliation to the hizbis. By hizbis, I assume you mean the people of innovation, the people of bid'ah. We are often invited to their gatherings, such as the aqiqa or weddings. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, the gatherings are done in segregation, there is no music. However, the imam or the leader of the hizbis are invited to give a sermon. Are we allowed to attend these gatherings? We do not attend the gatherings, nor the weddings, nor the funerals of Ahlul Bid'ah. If they are openly calling to innovation and you are and you and you know that they are people of innovation, then you do not attend any of their gatherings. You do not attend any of their gatherings. That between us and them is that we invite them to the haq, we invite them to the Durus of Salafiya, we give them books, we give them CDs and so on. But when they invite us to a gathering where they will speak and invite to their innovation, or their hizbis will speak, meaning the people of bid'ah. By hizbis, you hear, I assume you mean ahlul bid'ah, that they are calling from these gatherings, then we do not attend. Barakallahu feekum. Next question. 
when a parent tells you to do a good deed or prefers when you do it i an act of worship such as giving salam is it correct is the correct uh, is the correct intention to do this to please them ultimately for the sake of allah of course it is allah has commanded you to obey your parents so when you obey your parents your parents says give salam give salam you are rewarded for that you get two rewards one for obeying your parents and one for giving the salam how is your intention corrupted alhamdulillah you have two things that you have done which are righteous your intention to obey allah in obeying your parents you utter a statement of khair like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as as he was said in medina when he first entered into medina what did he say he said spread the salam feed the people and pray in the night when the rest of the people are asleep so yes obey your parents and there's reward for you in that for obeying them and reward Thirdly, third question, is it permissible for a sister to say no to a brother in marriage due to the fact of him not being a student? Is it okay that you put up a condition that she only wants students of knowledge? If a sister wants to study and she wants to marry a man who is upon the sunnah, learning the deen, student of knowledge, no harm. And that is afdal. Better that he's a student of knowledge than that he's a rich person. Better that he's a student of knowledge as long as he's not a student of knowledge claiming to be a student of knowledge and yet he does not go out to work not a student of knowledge who just likes to live on the dole rather a student of knowledge who will go out and work and provide for his family as the sahaba radiyallahu anhum used to do abu bakr and umar and uthman that they used to work and they used to work hard feed their families and they used to sit with the messenger of allah and gain knowledge from him and they were the foremost of the students of the Messenger of Allah, Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman. And all three of them worked. So if this is what you mean by student of knowledge, Alhamdulillah, yes, good. It is good that you seek to marry this, marry this type of person. And if you believe that you will suffice with a Salafi who is upon the Sunnah, he prays five times a day, he prays in the Masjid, he attends the Durus every so often, maybe even one dars a week, attends the Jummah Khutbah at the Salafi Masjid, and that is enough for you, alhamdulillah, no problem. Alhamdulillah, you have not married a wicked person. As long as he is not a sinner, open sinner. He, is a, he has a full grown beard. He keeps his garments above his ankles. He is a person of truthfulness. He's not a backbiter. He's not a major, he's not a major sinner. But at the same time, he is not a, a great student of knowledge. He may attend the conferences regularly. And you are happy with this? Alhamdulillah, good for you. No harm. Alhamdulillah. He works, provides for his family. Good, alhamdulillah. Don't turn your nose up at those brothers. They are good, alhamdulillah. That they defend the haqq to that which they know, but they are not strong students of knowledge. Labas, alhamdulillah. Fourthly, what do you advise for a sister and brother who communicate from marriage directly? Have repented, but keep returning to it. Should they leave the sin immediately? Or is it okay if they do it step by step? What, are, they, what, are you a drug addict or something? What do you mean? What's the problem in leaving it? This activity is haram. Haram. And shaitan will not stop up until he has caused you to make halal your private parts for each other. Shaitan will not stop. And then, my sister, you will cry. You will cry. You will feel lowly. And you will feel filthy. And you will feel dishonored. And you will feel immoral. And you will feel guilty. And you will not be able to look, your, look yourself in the mirror. Why put yourself in that situation? What do you mean? Is it okay to give it up step by step? Give it up. You're not upon heroin. You're not having to leave off. You know, you're not an alcoholic who's trying to leave, leave alcohol. You know, you're, 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 you're drinking of whiskey and wine. How hard is it to give this up? If the man was a man of honor, if he respected you like he respected his own mother, he would not behave with you like this. This man has no self-respect. This man has, and you can tell him, Abu Khadija said that such individuals have no self-respect. They have no honor. What kind of honor is this? 
that a man is communicating with you? What do you mean you are communicating for marriage? Who are you to communicate with a man for marriage? What, your guardians are dead? You have no ma males around you? There's no wali that you can go to? There's no mahram for you? If this is not the way to establish marriages. This will cause fitna and fasad. Fitna and fasad. And this is sinful what you are doing. And it will lead to more sin, not to less sin. Is it okay to give it up step by step? What do you mean give it up? Stop it. Pull out the plug from the back of your computer. Go and buy a Nokia phone that doesn't allow you to do any of this type of thing. Tell him to fear Allah. Tell your parents. I want to get married. This is obviously not the man for you. Because he has dishonored you. He has dishonored you. You should not have communicated with him. But he's a man who knows the honor of women. He knows the honor of a sister. He knows the honor of a mother. Why has he led you into this? And why have you fallen for it? Fear Allah, my sister. Stop it immediately. Leave the sin. Feel remorse. Because a day will come, my sister, that you are going down a road and you will enter into an affair and you will wake up in the morning and you will not be able to look at your face in the mirror. You will feel so ashamed of what you have done. Don't put yourself in that situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide myself and yourself to his pleasure. Fifth affair, fifth question. How does one repent for sins? I've already answered that through the lecture. If he also remember, remembers the sins from his past, does he repent for them? Of course. When, when repenting, do you pray raka'a or do you make, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's no specific dua that you can make, or there's no, sorry, there's no specific salah. Any prayer that you make in the sajda, ask Allah to forgive you. After the prayer, ask Allah to forgive you. Before you make the taslim, ask Allah to forgive you. After you make the taslim, ask Allah to forgive you. When you are away from the prayer, then raise your hands and ask Allah to forgive you. Face the qibla and ask Allah to forgive you. Perform wudu and ask Allah to forgive you. In the last third of the night, when Allah descends to the lowest heaven, to the nearest heaven in the last third of the night, then call upon Allah. Because Allah asks, answers the supplication of the one who supplicates to him. When it is raining, go out into your back garden and raise your hands in the rain and let the rain fall upon you and ask Allah to forgive you. When you are upon a journey, ask Allah to forgive you. When you are alone in your room, weep and ask Allah to forgive you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. I have a daughter who is 16. And we have had a marriage proposal for her from a Salafi brother. And I, and I know my daughter can see or meet this individual according to the sunnah with her wali present. My question is, what part does the mother play in such a meeting and is she also present? First of all, Forget the meeting. Forget the meeting. I don't know what kind of mentality our sisters have. And our brothers have. Forget the meeting. Your first step is what? Find out the brother's name. Let, your fa let the father of the girl meet the father of the boy. Let them meet each other. Find out which family you're marrying into. First step, find out about the character of that family by, sit, by the father sitting with them. Leave the girl at home. If the brother does not have parents who are Muslim, then let the father sit with him, with the boy, with the Salafi brother. Go and find out about that boy from other people. Find out which durus he sits in, which lectures he attends. Does he pray in the masjid? Where does he pray Jum'ah? Where does he seek knowledge? Find out. Tell him who, who knows you. Which brothers know you from those who teach? Which brothers in the masjid know you from the righteous ones? Where do you pray? Where do you work? What books have you read? Who are your parents? What is your background? Do you come from a home where your mother and father are married? Or do you come from a broken home? 
Were you raised in a foster home? Were you raised in a stable family? I want to know. Where do you work? How much do you earn? Find out all of these affairs. Have you been married before? Then after you are satisfied with all of that, then let him meet her. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, he looks at her, she looks at him. Bas, go home. Now he can decide and she can decide. This is the way. Not all of this texting and emailing and whatsapping and this and I know the sister, send me an image, I want to see your photo. Forget all of that. This is the honour of a woman and the honour of families. When you have your own children, you will realize the importance of this. So now, let them meet. Let them even have a conversation. You are their mother. You are their father. Both mother and father are sitting there. She's wearing hijab. The girl, if all of these references have come, th come, tr uh, come through, then the girl, she can uncover herself. And she can wear her garments that are normally worn underneath her jilbab. The garments, smart clothing that she would normally wear in front of her father, respectful, re respectable garments, she can wear that in front of the boy, sits there, he has three questions, she has three questions, four questions, no need, this is not the place now for interrogation. That, uh, that background research has already been done. What you're sitting there for now, make sure that his voice doesn't sound like the voice of a frog. She hasn't got a scar on her face that you can't see that you couldn't see from a distance. The father can be there and he can help his daughter. If the daughter is shy, alhamdulillah, which is good, let the father ask him and she will hear. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour most, go home. Make istikhara, no need for a second meeting. No need for a second meeting unless there is a grievous shak, you know, serious doubt. I've forgotten what she looked like or whatever. In which case you need to consider with a man with a memory like that, do you even want to marry him? So these are important considerations, my sisters. Barakallahu feekum. Next question. You have a close friend who is an individual that has traits of two-facedness. And you have seen this in the past. The time you've known this individual. Do you have loyalty towards such a person? Such a person who is known. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, the mo from the most severely punished Yawm al Qiyamah and from the most hated of individuals to Allah is a person who has two faces. He shows one face to one, peop one group of people and another face to another group of people. This person is not suitable for your companionship. Next question. Are women allowed to mix with non-mahram family members, talk to them, etc.? This is something known in our community has become normal. It is known in almost every community. Right? It is not particular to the Somalis or the Pakistanis or the Indians. Happens in most communities. As Salafis, then we do not mix with non-mahram family members. We keep a distance if they give salam. Wa alaikum salam. Kif haluk, alhamdulillah. Bas, take your path. Go to your room. Stay out of their way. Do not sit in the same rooms as them. Do not socialize with them. If they give you salam, wa alaikum salam. Kif haluki, alhamdulillah. Bas. If they want to strike up a conversation and socialize, then say, I have to leave and go. Next question. What is the aura of a woman in front of another Muslim woman? Is it permissible for a woman to wear tight clothes? For example, in these days, how tight jeans and tight tops, Western dress code, which have become normal in front of other sisters and likewise in front of fathers and brothers. Is it allowed and what is the evidence for it? Also, when advising, not to wear such clothing, some say it is being extreme, there's no proof preventing, and so on. And they, and they mention a proof that the aura of a woman is navel to the knee. Please shed some light upon this. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al haya kulluhu khair. That modesty, all of it, it is good. All of modesty is good. The hadith of Imran bin Hussein, radiyallahu anhu, that he said that the Prophet sallam, he said this. So the more modest a woman is, the better. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by a companion, 
Ya Rasulullah, what is the aura of a Muslim, of a man to a man? Meaning, of one of us to another. The Prophet ﷺ said, the navel to the knee. Most people know this hadith. But in a narration, the Prophet, the man said to the Prophet ﷺ, he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, what about when we are on our own? He said, Allah has more right that you are shy in front of him. Allah has more right that you are shy in front of him. Modesty. Modesty is from the noblest of traits of any human being. Even the kuffar, those who have some goodness in them, even they recognize their beauty and the nobility of modesty. This is the beauty of modesty, my sisters. The narration of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. When he walked in on the Prophet sallallahu a part of his thigh was exposed and he covered his thigh. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr walked in and you did not cover. Umar walked in and you did not cover it. Uthman walks in and you cover He said, should I not be shy in front of the one whom the angels are shy in front of? Shyness. So the women, generally speaking, should wear modest clothing. Especially in front of your fathers and your brothers. Clothing that does not expose your bodily organs. You know, which woman would like to expose her breasts in front of her father? What kind of madness is this? That you wear a garment and underneath, you, you know, you can see the actual formation of your organs. What kind of madness? You would do that in front of your father or your brother? This is crazy, my sisters. That's not modesty. If you're asking me what is the aura of a woman to a woman, the aura of the woman to a woman, many of the scholars, they say, that it is the navel to the knee, even to a woman to a woman. So now, are we going to sit in the company of other women with the navel to the knee covered and our breasts or your breasts exposed? Would you sit like that? You wouldn't. Because you know that modesty necessitates that you do more. Some of the scholars, they say no. The aura of a woman to a woman is what the female companions, what they would reveal to each other in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. This is tatbiq now. This is now actualizing and enacting those verses of the Qur'an that command the women to cover themselves except in front of fulan and fulan and fulana and fulana. Those verses in the Qur'an that command the women to cover and to draw their veils in front of themselves and not to reveal themselves except to so and so and so and so and so and so. And Allah mentions them. So what did the women in those situations reveal? And what is established is that generally speaking, we do not know except that the women would reveal to other women the places of wudu. Because they would perform wudu in front of each other and they would reveal that to each other. So the woman up to her elbows, for example, or up to the middle of her shin, she would reveal it to another woman. So these parts of the woman's body, no harm in revealing them. But as for, as for wearing these garments in front of other women, where you reveal the full cleavage, or that you reveal your bodily organs, then that is not from modesty. Modesty necessitates that you cover yourselves, my sisters. Even in front, you can look beautiful in front of other sisters on Eid or on a wedding and so on, but with garments that do not expose you and do not put in the minds of the people that this woman, she's not a modest woman. If a woman was to appear in front of you, think to yourselves, a woman with a miniskirt, a woman with a, with a, with, with their cleavage sewing, with her cleavage shown, a woman with very high heels, and so on and so forth. What image would you have in your mind with regard to this woman? What image would you have? Would you say to yourself, this woman is modest? You wouldn't. If you saw a woman like this in the street, you wouldn't say she's a modest woman. You'd say, in fact, she's an immodest woman, immoral woman, if you saw her in the street. Now, obviously, in front of Muslim women in their own company, there is some leeway. Dress nicely. But dress in a manner that is modest and nice and beautiful. Dress code from your own culture, no problem. Dress code from a foreign culture, no problem. Western dress code. 
Not a problem as long as it's not specific for them. No, it is not a problem. Right? And to show modesty is not extremism. To advise others with modesty is not extremism. It is from the Sunnah to advise with modesty. So then, therefore, I advise my sisters that you do not dress except in a modest manner. Save all of that other stuff for your husbands. Because in front of your husbands, do as you please. Save that for your husbands, not for outsiders. We'll go on to one or two more other questions before I finish, inshallah. What do you say to a sister who keeps ties with the, with the people of innovations, especially the Khawarij? Now she is Salafi and still is friends with them more than the Salafi Yun. No, she's not Salafi then. She's not Salafi. Such a person is not to be considered to be Salafi. That you say that you're upon, upon Sunnah and Salafiya, but all of your friends and your best friends are Khawarij, then you are not Salafi. We judge a person upon their companionship. Barakallahu feekum. And this is our manhaj. We mentioned already the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Al-mar'u ala deeni khalili. Falyanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. That a person is upon the religion of their friend. So look to whom you take as your friend. My question is, what is the ruling on delaying Salatul Isha? How far can it be? It is a sunnah to delay Salatul Isha. But do not delay it beyond midnight. Do not delay it beyond midnight. And then the scholars, they differ for the one. If they delay it beyond midnight, is it makru? Is it haram? What is it? At the least we can say it is something disliked. But it is a sunnah to pray Isha later, but before midnight. Now, What do you advise? What advice do you give to a young woman whose father is adamant that she cannot have marriage meetings? Until after education. That, that father should be advised. Tell a person of knowledge in your community to go and advise him and tell him to fear Allah. With regard to the rights of his daughter. The daughter has a right to be married. So send to him an advisor. Send to him someone his own age to advise him. Barakallahu feekum. There are a few more questions here. I have been practicing for three years. I have been in debt with people by borrowing. By borrowing for what? Anyway, no more than forty pound or maybe less. I do not. I I don't remember who I borrowed money from. After started practicing, what do I do? Figure out who you borrowed the money from, and who gave you the loan, and give them their money back. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, you know, to, to, to jog your memory. You need to pay that money back, barakallahu feekum. If after your struggle and striving that you cannot, then give that amount in sadaqah. There is a masjid I attend called Masjid Quba in West London. But I was warned not to go there because, they, because of the speakers they bring. <coughs> Although the only masjids of Salafi are Darul Sunnah and Masjid Sunnah. Can I attend this masjid seeing at the Salaf, as the Salafi Masajid are far away from me? But why do you as a sister need to go to a masjid? The best prayer for you is in your house. The best prayer for you is in your house. Why do you need to go to a masjid full stop? If you want to go to a masjid, no one can prevent you. But you should go to the Masajid of Sunnah. And it is allowed for your guardian or your husband to prevent you from going to the masajid of Ahlul Bid'ah. It is allowed if you are going to be exposed to innovation. So you should not go to that masjid if it is not a masjid of Salafiyyah. If it is not a masjid Salafi, then do not go. Do not go. And the best prayer for you is in your home. Barakallahu feekum. Somali weddings tend to begin at night after Maghrib and end very late. Is it permissible for a sister to be out that late? Should a sister still attend or just give greeting? No, she's allowed to stay late with the permission of her guardian, her father, 
or her husband, as long as she is in a protected environment, no harm, inshallah, even if she stays out slightly late, no harm, as long as it is a secure location and there is some, you know, security for her, no harm, barakallahu feekum, as long as she has permission from her father or her husband. Upon that note, inshallah, we'll conclude for today. And we'll call it today, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.